It was taken by me uh, when I was in college and 18, 18 years old. Um, I was in a, in a photography course and we had access to the light studio. And um, it was right around this time that I sort of got interested in taking dead pictures of myself, a hobby which continued to this day. You know what I just realized? <laughs> I was talking to Neil about this the other day, about how journalists are always asking us what our hobbies are, and I'm always really embarrassed because I don't have any. But now I'm taking yourself. dead photographs of myself, <laughs> technically I think counts as a hobby. What was the other one you came up with? I, I, I came up with beekeeping. beekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had come up with one. Or being awesome. Being awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's not a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way of life. So uh, if you are if you are wondering if you're too far away and you are wondering uh, what is happening here, I have eyebrows. <laughs> it's exciting, and uh, and the stuff coming out of my mouth is a uh, is a bunch of junk jewelry and fake pearls and weird uh, mismatched earrings and stuff like that. Point. Now Neil will read the story, and I will put this up here so you can. Uh, in front of Neil's books, <laughs> just to obscure his greatness. You are having altogether too much fun. <laughs> Once upon the olden times, when the trees walked and the stars danced. There was a girl whose mother died, and a new mother came and married her father, bringing her own daughter with her. Soon enough, the father followed his first wife to the grave, leaving his daughter behind him. The new mother did not like the girl and treated her badly, or was favoring her own daughter, who was indolent and rude. One day, her stepmother gave the girl, who was only 18, $20 to buy her drugs. <laughs> Don't stop on the way, she said. So the girl took the $20 bill and put an apple into her purse, for the way was long, and she walked out of the house and down to the end of the street, where the wrong side of town began. She saw a dog tied to a lamppost, panting and uncomfortable in the heat, and the girl said, poor thing. She gave it water. The elevator was out of service. The elevator there was always out of service. Halfway up the stairs, she saw a hooker with a swollen face who stared up at her with yellow eyes. Here, said the girl, she gave the hooker the apple. She went up to the dealer's floor and she knocked on the door three times. The dealer opened the door and stared at her and said nothing. She showed him the $20 bill. Then she said, look at the state of this place. And she bustled in. Don't you ever clean up in here? Where are your cleaning supplies? The dealer shrugged. Then he pointed to a closet. The girl opened it and found a broom and a rag. She filled the bathroom sink with water and she began to clean the place. When the rooms were cleaner, the girl said, give me the stuff for my stepmother. He went into the bedroom, came back with a plastic bag. The girl pocketed the bag and walked down the stairs. Lady, said the hooker, the apple was good, but I'm hurting real bad. You got anything? The girl said, it's for my stepmother. Please? You poor thing. The girl hesitated, then she gave her the packet. I'm sure my stepmother will understand, she said. She left the building. As she passed, the dog said, you shine like a gun. She got home. Her mother was waiting in the front room. Where is it? She demanded. I'm sorry, said the girl. Diamonds dropped from her lips, rattled across the floor. Her stepmother hit her. Ow, said the girl, a ruby red cry of pain, and a ruby fell from her lips. Her stepmother fell to her knees, picked up the jewels. Pretty, she said. Did you steal them? The girl shook her head, scared to speak. Do you have any more in there? The girl shook her head, mouth tightly closed. The stepmother took the girl's tender arm between her finger and her thumb and pinched as hard as she could, squeezed until the tears glistened in the girl's eyes. But she said nothing. So her stepmother locked the girl in her windowless bedroom so she could not get away. The woman took the diamonds and the ruby to Al's pawn and gun on the corner, where Al gave her $500, no questions asked. Then she sent her other daughter off to buy drugs for her. 
that girl was selfish. She saw the girl, the dog panting in the sun, and once she was certain that it was chained up and could not follow, she kicked at it. She pushed past the hooker on the stair. She reached the dealer's apartment and knocked on the door. He looked at her. She handed him the twenty without speaking. On her way back down, the hooker on the stair said, Please, but the girl did not even slow. Bitch, called the hooker. Snake, said the dog, when she passed it on the sidewalk. Back home, the girl took out the drugs, then opened her mouth to say here to her mother. A small frog, brightly coloured, slipped from her lips. It leapt from her arm to the wall where it hung and stared at them, unblinking. Oh my God, said the girl, that's just disgusting. <laughs> Five more coloured tree frogs and one small red, black and yellow banded snake. Black against red, said the girl, is that poisonous? Three more tree frogs, a cane toad, a small blind white snake, and a baby iguana. <laughs> she backed away from them. Her mother, who was not afraid of snakes or of anything, kicked at the banded snake, which bit her leg.